center is where we tell you their ongoing successes on the war against terror. It will give you a panorama. In the face of an ongoing insurgency in the North East. Good day. You are welcome to this week's edition of your favorite program, Command Center. Live from the Silverbed Television Abuja Studios, Command Center will give you an up-to-date information on the war against terror. My name is Amadin Uyi and I am your host on this program. The name Sambisa continues to remain a mystery to Nigerians. This is because since its adoption as the headquarters of the Boko Haram group, until their dislodgement by the Nigerian military, it was the location of heinous and untold crimes against humanity. Fortunately, on December the 24th last year, the Chief of Army Staff announced to the world that Sambisa has been recaptured and the last remnants of the terrorists flushed out. Only two weeks ago, they bring back our girls group, which has led a global campaign calling on the federal government to expedite the rescue of the remaining kidnapped Chibo girls in the captivity of Boko Haram were invited on a recognizance mission over the area. We have on our program today Brian Morocco, one of those that honored that invitation here to give us an idea of their experience during the trip. You can join the conversation via our Facebook page, STV Command Center, and follow us on Twitter at Command Center 16. Stay tuned. Terrorism is not jihad. It is cruel, wicked, and man's inhumanity to man. Both Islam and Christianity abhor the killings of the weak and defenseless. There can be no development without peace and security. See something, say something. Let's give peace a chance. Welcome back. For those who are just joining us, we have Ibrahim Morocco from the Bring Back Our Girls campaign group on the program. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. On a lighter note, is Morocco your real name or an alias? No, it's an alias. It's not my real name. My name is Ibrahim Usman. Okay. Yeah, but better known as Ibrahim Morocco because that's my nickname since my childhood. So it has gone yeah. viral. That you look like a Moroccan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. First of all, uh, before we just take the first question, let's watch a clip of the Bring Back Our Girls group uh, 1000 Day Advocacy. Okay. Bring back our girls now and alive. What are we demanding? Bring back our girls now and alive. What are we asking for? The truth, nothing but the truth. What do we want? Our girls back now and alive. When shall we stop? Not until our girls are back and alive. When shall we stop? Not until our daughters. Not 
That was the Bring Back Our Girls 1,000 1, Day Advocacy uh, Protest or Lack of Solidarity Work. Okay, for, for the group, what has it been like? Uh, it's been over three years. You have been consistent with, is consistent with this advocacy, yet not all the girls have been rescued. One, well, it doesn't say that we have taken, we have promised ourselves, or should I, I can't say it's an oath. We have promised ourselves that from the inception that is started of April, when the daily sit out started, it started, we didn't know it was going to take long. If you tell me it's going to take 1,000 days when we started, I won't believe because nobody will say yes. But when we started, we have promised ourselves that we will not stop until the 219 Chibo girls are rescued. That is a promise we made to ourselves. And we are still standing by that. That is why you see every milestone, we go on protests, we arrange other activities, and still remind the world that the girls are still in captivity. So we are not going back home. We are not stopping our demand. The demand continues until all our girls are rescued. The bring back our girls demand continues. You, you are not from Chibok, but the, the way and manner the BBOG used the word our girls, uh, you personalize it so much. Why? Yeah, you see, that is, well, it's good that you asked me this question on this note. Because these girls are Nigerians. And before any other thing, before being any other thing, I'm a Nigerian. Nigeria first. So if you take, that is what we have been advocating for, even outside BBOG. If we take out everything like sentiment of religious and tribal, every other thing, human beings are involved in this tragedy. And we are being driven by our shared humanity. So be it they are from Chibok, they are from Enugu, any other, any, any part of the country. They are human beings, they are Nigerians. It is our duty, it is our duty as Nigerians to come out and ask the government to do the right thing on behalf of these girls because they are Nigerians. It doesn't matter if I'm from Chibok or not. As long as I'm concerned, I'm a Nigerian and they are Nigerians. I need to speak on their behalf. Okay, you were part of the trip to Sambisa. Uh, the, uh, involving the BBOG and government officials. Now, before that trip, there was so much controversy that the BBOG would not honor the invitation from the uh, federal government. Why? The BBOG did not say it. they would not honor the invitation. There are letters. We received a letter on 12. It was written on 12, but it was submitted to us, sent to us on 13. We received a letter. BBOG is not a one-man decision. Every member of BBOG is a stakeholder and is a decision maker. Anything that we make in that group, we decide collectively. And we brought, the, when the letter was sent, it was sent to Dr. Obi Ezekwesele, who is the, one of the co-conveners and the leaders of the movement. And the letter addressed Dr. Obi Ezekwesele and three others. So she is the first on that list. And after receiving it, she brought it to the floor of the BBOG, the members should deliberate on the next outcome of it. And we had a argument, debate, everybody brought his own ideas, and we decided that before we go on this trip, we need a pre tour meeting. pre tour meeting in the extent that it's not that they should shift the date for some other day, but they should give us details of the journey. You can't just come and tell me, just take your back and let's go to this place. You have to tell me the logistic preparations and every other thing that was going to have. How many days am I going to spend? Because so that I will get ready fully before I leave. That is part of the conditions we give. And secondly, there was a statement that was made by some group of Nigerians who protested to the chief of arm, chief of army staff office that is Lieutenant Kuburatai, General Buratai. And they called us all sorts of names. And a general of the Nigerian military received them after calling us all sorts of names, terrorists, social advocacy terrorists. And we said, it is not proper for the government of Nigeria and the military hierarchy to welcome such comments in their own office. So we needed a traction and an apology on that. And we sent it 
on we replied the letter on 14. And that same night, a response came. And they gave us the list of everything that is going to happen in, in the tour. So we said, fine. Since this is what we have asked for, and they have responded at this point, then fine, we are good to go. So, so, so very clearly, the BBOG never, never. ever said they were not going to honor this. We ladies. never said we are never going to honor this invitation. We welcomed it. We welcomed it with open arms. Now, uh, you, you, you were, can you give us a brief detail of uh, what the trip was like? The trip to Yola started from, we went to Namdezuku Airport from here, from here, then to Yola, from Yola, then on a tour to Sambisa. It is, let me say, an eye-opener and a learning process. I'm not a military man. None of us that was on that trip that is a military man. And it only, it only shows that what we have been saying as a group for all this while, we are not wrong. We are on the right track. Because previously, our soldiers, our military, We've seen videos where our military are running from Boko Haram. We've seen military where they are complaining of lack of equipment. They cannot fight the terrorists because they are more sophisticated than them. But this time around, it's a different Nigerian Air Force we saw. Because even from their own statement, they said previously, during the previous government, they only, have, they only had two functioning aircraft. That is for their own fighter jet, Air Force jet. But now they have nine functioning aircraft. So from their equipment to their operations and their communication between the communication between the Air Force and the ground troop, everything we saw there is welcoming and is a good development. These are things we've been saying that yes, you need to equip our military, you need to give them the right tools to fight these enemies. If all these things have been done earlier on, I don't think we'll be where we are today in this war against insurgency. So I think, I think for so far, the Air Force, from what we've, we've seen within the Air Force hierarchy, this is commendable. So as, uh, you s saying that your experience regards their professionalism is commendable. Am I it's getting that is, right? It is. How it long is. did the trip uh, entail? Because we heard that uh, uh, the, 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 the group were flown around Sambisa. You went with Air Force personnel. You were able to see the place. Just give us brief details. Nigerians will be itching to know what you experienced. Yes, Nigerians have been itching and Nigerians have been asking questions <laughs> particular <laughs> to some <laughs> figures. During our tour, I, I'm from Bono State. Okay. And if you ask me how big is Sambisa, I don't know. I, I can only check Google and find out how big it is. But during that tour, the chief of air staff said, Sambisa for its is as big as 60 kilometers square. That is 18 times bigger than Lagos. And it was shocking to me. Even on Google, I've never seen that. But this is a word coming from the chief of air staff. And when we brought it out, and Nigerians started bringing so many words, I said, yes, the, the Nigerian Air Force need to come and clarify this, first of all, on this. Because we are not the one that said it. They said, they gave us these figures. And on the tour, even them, the Nigerian Air Force, have been saying it that yes, they have been working. They have been working. And we said, okay, yes, we know you have been working, but you need to do more. And we went on to and saw everything, their ground troops, the forest, everything. It was an eye opener. So we went, we, we saw, and we learned <laughs> from, the, from, the, from the Air Force as a, as, a civilian, as a civilian. And you just take me on the tour like this, and you say, this is what is going, what, what is going on. No matter what it is, I just need to see it in the best manner and take my own observation. And they, we've seen everything. The forest, how big it is, how they've been working, how they've been trying from afternoon tour to night sortie. Everything is well organized within the Nigerian Air Force. Wow. It is. Now, I know uh, Kamzira has been taking over. And I just want to know what it was like for you flying over that same region which we know had been the center of uh, crimes against humanities uh, humanity uh, the center of uh, gross human rights because i remember in 2014 
during the peak of the insurgency, early 2014. I also went on that trip uh, over Sambisa, and that was when Boko Haram, and going over, looking down and knowing that your aircraft could be shot at any time. Did you have that same feeling? That same, fe <laughs> that same feelings that you said, you, had, you have a first-hand experience. But in this, in this journey, before even um, entering the plane, there was a briefing. Okay. The briefing was, the professionalism in that briefing is out of this world. They give you details of everything before you leave the, okay. that airspace, before you fly out. Every detail they give you, this is what they are going to do, this is for emergency, this is, everything is documented. And they explain everything. They, will, they have removed every fear from you, even before embarking on the journey, <laughs> from the briefing, from the brief room. So everything was brief, and you see, you, you, you get, you, get you feel encouraged by seeing these young, young boys of the Nigerian Air Force flying these jets before you get to the flight by the other side. They will give you the map, show you everything. This is what we are going to do, this is what we are going to do. They have, they, before you even enter the plane, already they've removed every fear. They're giving you confidence. That is the present Nigerian Air Force. Okay, now, beyond uh, you have commended the Air Force, lauded their professionalism, we have worked with them on a closer capacity. So t for a while we have been, we, we, we know how professional the Nigerian Air Force has acted in the last one year or in the last two years, but mostly in the last one year. Acquisition of aircraft, uh, sorties going over Sambisa, recognizance, air interdiction. But now, uh, beyond your impression of the Nigerian Air Force, did, you, did it change your perception of government on government's efforts to bring back those girls? Perception in terms of asking the right question or demanding for more? No. We are still on that. That is for sure. As for the Nigerian military or the Nigerian Air Force in general, as a group, we have always appreciated the Nigerian military. We have always appreciated their sacrifice. We have always appreciated their effort. But we have s we've said it, even in our statement after returning from San Bisoto, we said, but our demands continues. The demand from the beginning did not start by equipping the Nigerian military or doing this for the Nigerian military. The Nigerian military will not be involved if something is not going on. If a war is not going on, the Nigerian military will be in their barracks. There was a war going on. That is why the Nigerian military was involved. And it started by from the onset of the kidnap of these girls, we started this demand. And we had continued with our demand. We said it that, yes, they have been doing well. They've done great. We commend you on that. But you need to do more. Until these 195 girls are rescued, then you can tell me that, yes, what, do I have a different perception? No. OK, finally, finally. Uh, now, Nigerians would have thought that seeing this on a first-hand basis, that the Bring Back Our Girls would have come down and reduced your advocacy and your campaign, tone uh, in Nigerian parlance, tone it down a little. But we have not seen that. Your sit-outs have continued. Your protest work have continued. Why? Because this protest, the Bring Back Our Girls protest started initially is to awaken the government to its responsibility, which is protecting the lives and properties of Nigerians. And you see, the Nigerian government must accept the fact that critics from citizens and complaints must be welcomed. You just don't, you can, just can't cla classify every critic or anybody that is asking the right question to this government as an enemy or any other person. Our demands, our, pre our protests, our, pr our pressure to the government did not stop with within one second. Why, even while we are in Yola and Sambisa there, our colleagues are here asking more questions. And we will continue. We will tone the, vo the, the voice of our advocacy down when one nine, 195 Chibok girls are rescued and saved. But before then, Aluta continua. Thank you very much. That is uh, much you can take now. You have heard it from Ibrahim Usman, popularly called Ibrahim 
Morocco. They would tone down their advocacy when 195 girls are returned back to the comfort and safety of their homes. We have come to the end of today's episode. Join us same time, same station next week. Do not forget to like our Facebook page, STV Command Center, and send us your comments and questions. You can also follow us on Twitter at Command Center 16. For those of you who want to watch a repeat of the episode, uh, you can follow it up on our Facebook page. I remain your amiable host, Amadin Uyi. Goodbye. Center is where we tell you the ongoing successes on the war against terror. It will give you a panorama. In the face of an ongoing insurgency in the north.